The suite of softwares that make up FL Digi and NBEMS are FL Digi, FL MSG, FL Wrap, and FL Amp. We've already looked at FL Digi's setup and configuration, and in this program we're going to cover the user interface and basic operations. We're going to start off by taking a tour of FL Digi's user interface. We'll start in the top left hand corner and this is the frequency that's in the radio. Below that you'll see that the mode that the radio is in, FM, uh, upper sideband, two most popular. Uh, beside this on the right, you'll see these arrows in a circle. That toggles this display to an S-meter. This S-meter will only display the actual signal if you're using FL rig to control your radio. If you're using any other kind of radio control, you'll see nothing in the display. So I normally don't use it. Beside this, you have a little book. Uh, if you click on the book, it opens up a selections of frequencies that you can load into your radio. These are ones that I've saved. And how you actually load it into the radio is you choose a particular frequency, and you'll notice it has the frequency, the radio mode, the modem, and where on the waterfall. It will change all of those things at one time. Uh, so if you have a particular net that you check into uh, or something like that, you can save that and load it quickly. So you just select the one that you're interested in, come up here to the green arrow and click on that, and it will actually change the radio to that frequency, and it actually changes change the, the mode over to that also. Uh, so if you want to add new ones to the list, you use the plus key to add it. If you want to delete one from the list, you use the negative key to delete it. And you can see that it's coming up with the uh, balloon windows. So if you just hover over a key, it'll show you what it means. Uh, you do not hit the trash can or that it'll clear your whole list and you don't want that. Uh, this little bubble here below that will show the active frequency. So if you click on that, it'll bring up the active frequencies and you can pick a particular uh, grid prefix to use. In my case, uh, we might use EM. And so if I load that in there and then click on here, it will tell other operators in the area that are operating digital and what frequency they're using. There's no activity at the moment, uh, but this is really handy for telling you what band uh, that's active um, in your area at any given time. And that's a handy thing to have sometimes. So we'll uncheck the book and continue over here. This is for logging. This will save all of the contact information to the right here. So when you want to actually enter the, that information into the log, you click here. Uh, above that is the clear. That will clear all of these spaces. And the last one is the QRZ window. <clears throat> so let me show you how this works. Uh, below here in the window here, you can see where I've received a transmission, um, and my call sign is what is in here. If I click on the call sign, just left click on it, notice that it loads it in the call sign area. Uh, I can come down here to my name and right click on that, and it brings up this list of things that I can uh, put in place. And you notice this is the long list. Uh, it might come up with the short list, and how you change that is here at the bottom just click on all entries and it'll give you the whole list to work with uh, but I just click on the one I want and then I want to enter it as the name so I uh, click on my name right click on that and then click left click on name and notice how it puts the name up here so I can do that for all of the information uh, that I pick out of a call and uh, load it in so that it can be stored in my logbook uh, Knoxville I can just say QTH and it loads it uh, so let me clear all this out. I hit clear and it will clear everything out of the logbook fields and I'll uh, just say OK. Uh, and I'm just going to click my name again, uh, my call sign. And you notice it loads the call sign. Well, if I don't want to go and do all this individually, this is where I come up to the QRZ if it's configured for that. Uh, just click on that and it will automatically go and search the internet and load everything that it can find on that contact. That's really handy to have. Uh, so you can see it's got listed the frequency that we're on. Uh, when I started the the contact, this clock will keep logging, uh, keep counting until I actually log it. Uh, contact information, and then all of these fields. Uh, there's a couple other fields for country, and I can also make notes. All of this information, when I hit the save key, will go into the logbook. 
<clears throat> to the far right, uh, you'll see a few uh, buttons, the RXID and the TXID. Um, uh, those that read uh, Solomon IDs, you want to leave those on. Uh, the tune will, uh, if you hit this, it will start your radio transmitting and give you a tone uh, so that you can tune up an antenna. Uh, it's a good it's a feature, handy feature to have, but don't click it unless you're ready for the radio to transmit. Coming down to the bottom of the screen, uh, we'll start uh, all the way over here on the left. Uh, you can see this is the waterfall control, and I can click anywhere on the waterfall uh, to move uh, the waterfall around. Uh, so just clicking on the waterfall lets me place it. Uh, I can look at uh, the waterfall, the WF on the left. I can also look at FFT uh, or signal. Uh, so most people leave it on the waterfall. Uh, the boxes beside here, are the upper signal level and the signal range, just leave these as the default. Uh, if you want to zoom in on the waterfall, it's a, in a one, uh, one power zoom now, but you can take it two or three if you want to get a real close up of uh, what the signal looks like. Uh, once you do that, you can use these buttons beside it uh, to move the whole waterfall to the left or right uh, to uh, get it in a position where you can uh, see the part of the waterfall that you actually want to see. Uh, we, again, we normally leave it in the, the full zoom mode so you see all of the waterfall. Uh, when I click, uh, say I wanted to click on 1500, but I'm not going to get right on it, uh, the actual number I'm at comes up here. I can use these adjustments to the left and right. Uh, this one goes 10 at a time, and the smaller one goes 1 at a time to get it right at the number that I want. Uh, so I'm going to be on 1500 in the waterfall. I can micro adjust it with these controls. Uh, QSY, actually, if I'm somewhere else on the waterfall and I hit QSY, it will move the whole waterfall and the frequency on the radio over to where I'm in the best part of the waterfall for the signal. Um, and so if you're doing uh, transmissions, uh, especially on uh, single sideband or upper sideband, uh, this will get you in the very best part of the waterfall for your signal to be uh, sent and received. Uh, it's actually moving the frequency on the radio and sliding the whole waterfall uh, by adjusting the radio frequency. Um, I can store. This is another way of storing the mode and frequency. Uh, again, I can just uh, left click on it to store it, and then I right click and it gives me the choices of the ones that I've stored. That's kind of a handy feature uh, to have. Uh, the LK is a lock. Uh, if I have it on 1500, I can hit LK. You'll notice it turns it blue. This will lock my transmit frequency to 1500. Uh, the Reed Sullivan may move it around slightly, you know, to the left or the right, depending on uh, the reception. Uh, but I can lock lock it so that it transmits on the 1500 every time. Uh, so when I hit lock, uh, it turns it blue to remind you. Uh, the RV is for reverse. If for some reason you wanted to use lower sideband, uh, if you used reverse, that would flip uh, the the uh, in, the signal, uh, so it would be reversed. Uh, you'll almost never use that, but that's what it's for. If you ever use lower sideband, uh, you might need to use reverse. Uh, to the right of that, we have the TR, Transmit and Receive. This is just a toggle. This is one of the ways you can either initiate a transmission or stop a transmission. Uh, so this is an important button. When you are transmitting, this light will actually turn red and show you that you're in transmit mode. Uh, we have the squelch here. We can turn it on or off and adjust it uh, here. Uh, and basically, uh, that, uh, I suggest you run the squelch off uh, when you're actually doing receptions and transmissions uh, just so that you don't miss anything. Uh, I've had uh, friends that have missed the beginnings of uh, transmissions because the squelch is turned on. This is like the squelch on your radio, uh, but it's just internal to FL Digi. Uh, so I suggest when you're actually uh, using it that you turn the squelch off. Um, there's an AFC, Automatic Frequency Control. It will help uh, ride the frequency uh, when that's available. Uh, the diamond here uh, is a display indicator for the signal strength and the type of signal. As long as it's green, you're good. It's going to be able to decode uh, the incoming signals. 
this is an attenuator. Uh, this is like turning the transmit knob on your signal link. Basically, uh, this is a very fine adjustment. Once you get it close with the signal link, you could actually go in and make fine adjustments if you want to. Uh, this should read anywhere between minus 6 and minus 3. Anywhere in that's fine. Um, I generally don't adjust it because I can get it close enough with uh, the uh, transmit uh, level uh, with my signal link to, to make me happy. Uh, all of these lower windows below that are just windows that display information depending on the mode that you're in. Uh, the far left window is your modem indicator, so whatever modem that you choose will be in this window. It's very important to notice the modem that you're in, especially when you're getting ready to make a transmission. Uh, if you left click on it, it will show you all of the available uh, modems in that particular modem. So this is Olivia, and you can see these are all the different types of Olivia, and I can choose a particular one. Uh, so if I wanted to go from 8500 to 4500 because of uh, propagation or, or uh, difficulty in reception, I can do it just by left-clicking that and easily get uh, to that list. The last two things are the uh, the reception and transmit window, this is showing both uh, what's being received and what's being transmitted. The red is actually what you transmit. I transmitted this little macro so that I would have something to use for demo purposes. Uh, all of the incoming signals will be in black. Um, and then you'll also see uh, when it marks it with the RSID, uh, it will mark that in blue. So when you do see incoming transmissions, you'll see uh, the RSID uh, flag for that. Uh, so basically, you're going to see everything here. This lower blue window is your transmit window. So everything that you load into the blue window is what you're going to actually transmit. Uh, so that's our tour of the user interface. We want to look at two things to see the operations of FL Digi. The first thing we're going to do is look at receptions. Uh, you'll notice that I'm in uh, PSK31. Uh, I have the uh, internal browser set here, uh, but to see the whole waterfall, you have to scroll up and down it, and I really don't like that. Uh, so what I tend to do is to close that by sliding it over, uh, then come up to View and come down to Signal Browser and open the main browser um, and then I can uh, make the uh, you know FL Digi window the size that I need for it to be uh, and this way I can watch the whole uh, uh, waterfall in one site uh, and I don't have to worry about moving around uh, but you'll notice that I'm over here but you see that there's a transmission here if I just click on that you notice that it moves it over to right on the signal and now I'm actually seeing it come up in my window here uh, the actual transmission uh, so basically uh, that's how it works to, for reception purposes uh, make sure that your squelch is off uh, but uh, PSK 31 is a very popular digital mode uh, I'm on 7.0 7, 7 and either there or on 14.070 are the two most popular places uh, for 20 and 40 meters. Uh, but you'll notice here there's I've got a call sign here. So I could just left click on that call sign and come back up here. Um, and when I click on that call sign, you notice it inserts it here. And then I can just come up to the world and it will populate it. Uh, it tells me a lot about uh, this particular uh, operator. His name's Paul and he's in Amherst, New Hampshire. Uh, so all of this just populates off the internet uh, when you hit the QRZ tag. Uh, so basically at this point, uh, I'm receiving his signal uh, and I could respond to it. So the last thing we want to do is to show you how to do a typical transmission. So you can see that I have Olivia 8500 set up and I'm at 1500 on the waterfall. Uh, my lower blue window here is my transmit window and my upper window shows both transmission and receive. Uh, I'm going to use a macro, uh, the CQ macro. This is one that you would have in, the, in your defaults and it has an automatic start and an automatic stop to it. So I'm just going to click on it to get it started. You'll notice it loads it in the transmit window. Uh, you can see that my uh, RSID has been sent and then you can see the actual Livio signal here and you can 
can see it's working its way through the transmission. Note that my cursor is after the uh, receive command at the end. And you can see the outgoing signal and what that looks like. Uh, so using a macro for this purpose for CQ is something everybody does all of the time. And you can see the transmission is stopped and we're finished. Uh, the other way to do a transmission is to set it up in the transmit window and then to activate it. Uh, so to set it up in the transmit window, again I'm going to use macros to populate that. Uh, this one right here that I've created that's DE and me, I'm going to click on that. That just loads this DE K4REF. DE stands for this is. You always want to start your transmission with at least that. Uh, the next thing I'm going to put in there is my macro for my information. Uh, so you can see right here that has a little bit of information about me, which is something I might share in a conversation. And then the last thing I'm going to put uh, is a BTU or back to you. Uh, so at this BTU is a very common uh, end, of, end of transmission response, and there's a K at the end showing at the ending. And again, it'll automatically put it back and receive when it's done. Uh, so it's manually loaded, located. At this point, all I have to do to run the manual, uh, run it, is to come down and hit the transmit button uh, down here in the bottom right-hand corner. Or I do have a macro uh, that does the exact same thing, puts it in transmit mode. So when I'm ready to send it, I just hit transmit, and it takes off. And you can see the. Uh, RSID coming up and then it's actually transmitting the signal and you notice that it's working its way through this signal uh, I'm going to put the cursor up here in uh, the uh, content here so you can see what happens uh, basically it's going to go till it finds that cursor and stop and so if you don't put the cursor at the very end of your transmission uh, it's going to stop wherever the cursor is in your transmission. Uh, one of the things that you can do, uh, which is very common, is uh, you can actually add lines as you go along uh, and manually type things. So I could say, hi, this is Rick. Uh, and then you notice it got to the cursor and it stopped. It's not proceeding. So to do the rest of the uh, transmission, I've got to put the cursor at the end of it. So remember, always put your cursor at the very end of your transmission so it will make it all the way through to the end. Uh, and in this particular thing, it will shut itself down automatically. Uh, so those are two ways that we do our, our very typical transmission uh, is to do it with a macro. And uh, people have conversations just with macros going back and forth uh, on PSK31 is a very uh, popular way to do that. One other thing, if I'm in the blue window here and you right click on that, this is one other way to start the transmission. But I also wanted to show you, you can paste other texts from elsewhere. You can also insert files. So if you wanted to put a wrap file in here, you could actually uh, call it up through this insert file command. Uh, so that's it on how to do transmissions, uh, basic transmissions in FL Digi. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful to you in introduce, introducing you to FL Digi operations and uh, basic transmissions and receptions.